Bonjour. Y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to. Hey, we're in Paris, Texas. Hey y'all, good morning. Welcome to Paris, Texas. This is my first time here. This is my first time seeing the Texas Eiffel Tower. Let's go get some facts about it. Let, let's, let's talk about this Eiffel Tower for a minute. And just reading on here, the replica of the famous Paris landmark here in Texas stands a mere 65 feet. Now, the original Eiffel Tower stands, I believe, over a thousand feet tall from bottom to the tippy top. So yeah, not everything in Texas is bigger, contrary to popular belief. But it may, I'm not going to say it's better than the Eiffel Tower in Paris, I've never been there, but I mean, got a giant cowboy hat up there, a red, and you know, red cowboy hat. That is unique and that's pretty cool. So our Eiffel Tower may not be taller, but it's got a big cowboy hat on it and that's almost just as awesome. So if you journey over here to the other side of the Eiffel Tower, there's a Red River Valley Veterans Memorial. I'm going to check that out too because I've never been to this. Never been to Paris as far as I can remember. So, we'll see what it's about here. That's a really pretty entrance way to this memorial. And I think, yep, that should be all of the in honor of. And then I think they've got sponsors probably here that bought a big paver. They also have a donation box here in case you'd like to do that. So this memorial is for all of those who have served and who currently serve in the military. There's an overview here that says it's a place for reflection, remembrance, and gratitude, and a place to educate present and future generations of the sacrifices made by members of their own family and their community to secure the freedoms we all enjoy. These gates are awesome. For all who enter this garden of stones, may it serve to remind us of the immeasurable price of peace. And it's got a bunch of names listed. Those who served. It's got donors here on the wall. So got little <clears throat> benches here with names on it as well. People who have probably donated and put these here in honor of someone or maybe their family. Just at the vast majority of names. A lot of them tell of course, the name, what branch of the military, what years they served, wars, World War II, Vietnam.
Okay, this is talking about the different wars here. Estimated totals killed and wounded. This is the Texas Revolution. Wow. And then the Civil War. Spanish American War. Photographs. I'm probably most excited to see these statues here. There's another one on the other side that we're going to see. But this is the War Dog Monument. It's to honor all dogs and handlers from all the wars. It's pretty neat. And I love the backdrop here. It did, this would make a great picture. I actually know the artist of this statue and the other one on the other side that we're going to see. Bob Harness. And, uh, It's a great statue and he's done other great pieces and I think he did a good job on that. It's just going through all of the the wars here again. How many were killed or wounded? Look at that. World War One. And World War Two. So it looks like they're going to be maybe expanding, doing some more stuff back here, which is exciting. And here's a little monument or to recognize the World War I Choctaw Code Talkers. It says they used their language on battlefields during World War I. 19 Choctaw soldiers pioneered the use of Native American languages as a military code. With pride, the Choctaw Nation recognizes their singular and heroic service. Here's the other statue that I was telling you by the same artist. The Gold Star Family Monument. A woman, probably a spouse of a Someone in the military holding the flag. Got her son saluting. It's a nice statues. Did a great job. This is a very peaceful place out here. I think they put it in a really good spot. It is a place to come and reflect. It just, it's quiet out here. So, highly recommend this place. They did a really great job. going underneath the uh, Texas Eiffel Tower. Of course you gotta have the state of Texas under here. Let's look up. <sighs> Let's go explore other parts of Paris, Texas besides this awesome Eiffel Tower <laughs> of sorts. Let's go find somewhere else to explore.
here we are. We are at Evergreen Cemetery. Y'all, this place is huge. I think it is the largest cemetery in this county, in Lamar County. A lot of really old grave sites here. I think there's around 40,000 known grave sites here. And uh, there's a lot of cool monuments out here. Uh, I mean, I'm going to do this very respectfully. This is, you know, a cemetery, obviously. But um, there's a few things out here that are a little odd. Uh, there's one monument in particular that's pretty famous that I'm going to try to find while I'm here. So let's go have a look-see, see what we can find. I'm going to try to stay on the well-beaten paths here so I'm not walking on top of graves. I may be a little bit superstitious about that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of wander around and I I'm really kind of interested in these um, unique gravestones. I believe this place was established in the 1800s, so um, this grave is marked, it says died 1895, I think, here with the little child or cherub or something laying on top, but um, yeah, they just don't make the gravestones like they used to anymore, do they? They look so different. That one's actually fell over. That one's leaning pretty good, too. You know, there's a major roadway highway right here to get into the cemetery but it's still really peaceful out here honestly this is a historical cemetery by the way um, by the Texas Historical Commission has dubbed it a historical cemetery and there are plenty of notable people uh, from this area that are buried out here and I will definitely show you the one monument of a pretty prominent person from this area that's buried out here his monument is gets visited by people from all over so we'll we'll definitely check it out hopefully I can find it because this place is huge here's one that's kind of interesting it's really pretty like a lady in a dress sitting up here kind of like she's thinking, almost like a thinking pose. Let's see, I believe this person passed in early 1900s, looks like 1904. Some of these gravestones just blow my mind how intricate they are. It's a big pretty tree right there. Lots of shade. And this monument is huge. Varner See, I'm staying on the concrete here. <laughs> Here's another large gravestone. The lady at the top. 
she have a bow in her on the front of her head there? That's what it looks like. Could definitely walk forever out here. There's just gravestones as far as you can see. We're walking up to some, looks like some taller monuments now, or markers. That looks kind of like a church steeple or cathedral or something. Elvis Ryan, he was a, in the Confederate States Army, died in 1907. So it's a little bit hard to make out, but you can actually see his name right there. There's the N. You can see they put his name there, Ryan. Uh, something else. It's interesting. That's got a little dove, I think. That's what it looks like. Again, y'all, it's it's really peaceful out here, even though, like I said, there's a major roadway over there. It's really peaceful out here. So it looks like here's another family plot, but what caught my eye was this gravestone here with the little boy He's holding a, a little lamb is in his lap. Looks like a lamb. But uh, it's obviously a child. It says Little Lloyd, born May of 1889. And I believe it says died September of 1893. It's kind of hard to read. Is a massive cross. Wow. I'm always intrigued by the angel statues. I think they're really pretty. Can't really tell what she's holding. I mean, if you were a history buff, this would be an awesome place to come. There's several people buried here that were pretty prominent in the community, and this is just awesome. Died 1887. Here we go. Look at that. Isn't that something? Captain Adams died in 1881, and I'm guessing his wife, Flory, in 1903. How ornate that is. So this is the back side of that monument here and uh, I just did a quick Google search on it and this thing's supposed to be like 25 feet tall. 
Says my angel husband, the fairest flower I fondly love, how soon it fades and dies, but purer it will bloom above in bowers of paradise. Wow. Look at the garland that goes around the side here, just how ornate that is. I'm walking in between. <laughs> this is interesting. It says D.H. Moore, I believe. Died in 1886 at only 27 years old. I can't really tell what that is, but it's a helmet of some sort. FBC. Okay, so I just learned something. So that shield, I just Googled it. And this is like a uh, secret society, like a fraternal organization. Knights of Pythias, I think that's what it is. I'm not sure if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but uh, I, I kind of googled it to see and, and I think that that's what it is. <laughs> I'll learn something new every day. It's interesting. So I think we found what we came for. This monument right here is draws people from a lot of places. They come to look at this because there is something unusual about this monument. <laughs> People call it Jesus in cowboy boots. It looks like the figure up there is wearing boots. And it looks like he's wearing like boot cut pants. <laughs> it's a very odd thing. <laughs> Jesus in boots. This is the gravestone, very elaborate gravestone, of Willet Babcock. He died in 1881. Looks like he was born in New York and died in Paris in 1881. So Mr. Babcock was a pretty prominent person in the community. He was a manufacturer of fine furniture. He built furniture. He was a casket maker and an undertaker. And he was the owner of an opera house. But anyway, he was, he was wealthy, very prominent. And when he passed, it is believed that a German immigrant named Gustav Klein actually made the monument but we no one knows historians don't really know why that this figure here is wearing boots because Babcock was a businessman prominent businessman and you know back in the 1800s he uh real you know working cowboys wore boots not necessarily prominent businessmen so Uh, it, it's kind of a strange thing it, it's one of those things that make you go hmm why but it's interesting nonetheless there are rumors about this figure people say it's Jesus historians don't believe it is I'm just looking at it and I don't think it's Jesus I think it's just a kind of a religious figure, maybe another angel or But there's also a rumor that this monument, religious monument by the way, you know, you got the cross and is is facing in a northern direction. The other religious monuments out here all face east 
So, because this monument faces a different way, there's a rumor going around that has gone around for a long time that this monument, that Babcock was an, an atheist. Which historians say is also not true. But it is very strange and unusual and really ornate and very beautiful, actually. And just as I said earlier, the Evergreen Cemetery is a historic Texas cemetery, dubbed that way by the Texas Historical Commission. And uh, it just tells you that there are lots of notable citizens of Paris and Lamar County that are here. Uh, how they purchased more land for it when the tracks were acquired. And, of course, it talks about Willet Babcock and the Jesus and Cowboy Boots Monument. <laughs> so here's another really nice monument. This um, actually has a little plaque with it. It's Travis Clack Henderson. It says, during the Civil War... Uh, he served as captain and staff officer, and then he became prisoner of war. And uh, he survived that and came back to Lamar County. And he represented the area for 12 years in the Texas House of Representatives and two years as a state senator. And this is his monument. died in 1919. Y'all, you could really spend quite a bit of time out here checking everything out. I can tell you that there was a nice gentleman that, that one in the golf cart going by, that saw me out looking at the monuments and taking some pictures and he brought this to me so you know if you're out and about the people here are very helpful they know this is kind of a a touristy thing I guess in, in some sense of the word and uh, they're very helpful and they'll actually help you find if you're looking for a particular grave site probably most notably the Jesus and Cowboy Boots. They know exactly where it is and they can be helpful to you. I don't have a tremendous amount of time to spend out here today, but I wanted to catch some of the highlights and uh, I recommend if you like old cemeteries, if you like the history, um, like I said, you can get a brochure and really get to know some of the people out here and, and their histories, then I definitely recommend you come in. I think they close maybe like a little after dark or something like that, but let me see. Hours of operation. Sunrise to sunset. So, get out here during the daytime and kind of walk around and there's plenty of shade. And uh, it's, it's really neat. I recommend. I just walked up on this. I'm not sure what that is other than it probably had like a plant or something hanging from it maybe, but... I guarantee you, you take one of those rocks home, your house is going to be haunted. Guaranteed. <laughs> I wouldn't try it. Let's put it that way. I got my glasses on so they can only mean one thing. We're about to drive out of here. So, thank you for coming with me today on this adventure to Paris, Texas. 
And, you know, we did some touristy things today and got a lot of walking in. And I don't think it was a good day. And I'm, I'm glad that you came with me. If you're up this way, up Paris Way, please uh, check out some of the places that I went to today. I, I recommend I recommend them. I think you'll enjoy it. They've got some good places to eat in town. They've got lots of shopping. They've got a really pretty downtown area that I didn't even show you today because I didn't have time to do that. But recommend coming. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already. And I thank you to those who have subscribed. So thankful to all of you that have decided to subscribe to this journey. It, it helps the channel out very, very much to keep the content coming. Um, so thank you again. And hope you come back for the next episode of wherever I wander to. And please like, please subscribe, and please keep watching. I'll see you the next time. Yeehaw!